Okay, so when I have uh, my camera, I have it selected. In my channel box, when I select that, I actually just want to have its controls, plus I want to add to it some, some extra channels. I'm going to add a focal length, which adjusts the camera. So if I have a 35 millimeter camera, uh, a 20 millimeter camera, uh, a, 35, a 50 millimeter camera, I want to be able to adjust the kind, basically the kind of eye I want to look through. All right, the human eye is more like a 50 millimeter camera. Uh, a standard camera is 35 millimeters, and then we have bigger cameras. So I want to have that to, uh, I want to be able to adjust that value. So as I change this, notice the camera, if I change this value by my using my, my, uh, uh, my virtual slider by selecting the name, notice that the cameras, uh, this changes. And so I want to be able to control that. So I want focal length to be on there. So let me show you how you do that. I'm going to add some others too, but the process is the same. Okay, I have my camera. I'm going to hide this. I have my camera selected. I'm going to go to Modify, and I'm going to go to Add Attribute. i got to give the attribute a name, just like we have Translate X, Translate Y, and this is going to be Focal Length. Focal Length. Focal length needs to have a data type. And you're, if you know anything about programming, you got to have a data type. There's integers, there's floats that have integers with a, a, a fractional portion, so 1.25. There's strings and booleans. We're just using a float because I want to be able to have 1.5 if I want it. A minimum value. Uh, my minimum value is going to be. Uh, I think the, the camera minimum value is like 2.5 and the maximum um, is uh, 3500 and I checked that out by going into the settings and finding out what the maximum values actually are uh, and so the minimum and maximum values happen to have a full a range that it'll only go to so I'm just using that. So really, I'm not doing much more than what already exists. I'm just making a control that's easier for me to get to. Uh, and so I'm going to say Add. And notice that over here, my focal length is 2.5 because it's the, the lowest value that I can go to. And it'll go up to, let's say I put 4,000, uh, 4, it'll only go up to 3,500. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at 550 because that's the size that I want. So currently, it doesn't do anything. Uh, I have to connect it. Uh, so if I was to just stop right there and go into my uh, uh, go into my controls, um, I, all I simply need to do is say that I'm going to open up my window, my connection editor, or sorry, general editors, connection editor. I'm going to save my scene real fast before I lose it. I already made one, but I'm going to make this one, give it a different name. All right, so the, the attributes of this focal length, this, uh, the focal length attribute um, is going to drive basically the focal length uh, the focal length attribute of this. So this is going to be driven by the focal length attribute of my of my shape of my camera. So what I need is my actual the shape node of my camera. So I'm going to bring up my cameras here. So right now when I'm in my hypergraph I have a I have uh, my hierarchical group and then I have my input and output uh, group, and this gives me this gives me the ability to have um, a little bit more control of what's going on. So uh, you have the camera's location here, its translation attributes, and then you have the shape attributes. So notice that there's different settings. So what I'm gonna what I'm really what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna take the uh, focal length setting here, the focal length. So I'm going to load this one. So it's kind of confusing. The focal length, uh, not the focus distance, but the focal length. I've got to find it. It's probably down here. 
Here's focus region. We're going to do that, and we're going to do f-stop too. So I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of these in a minute, but I have to make attributes. But let me find focal length. Focal length. The focal length attribute here is going to actually drive the focal length. Um, my focal length, this one, on my transform. So I have my camera transform load here. My, I made on my camera transform node a focal length. That is going to drive my focal length attribute on my shape node. So here's my camera shape. So this is my camera's transform. Camera transforms loaded over here. And I have my focal length that I created. But that is going to drive the one that already exists, which is the depth of field, uh, the depth of field camera's shape node. So this is my shape node. I'm loading it over here. And it's going to drive my focal length attribute over here. So I'm kind of, what I'm basically doing is saying my focal length on my transform node, which it doesn't usually exist, is going to drive the focal length of the actual shape node. So it's the camera, but the camera has two different nodes, a shape node and a transform node. Well, I added an attribute onto my transform node that exists on the shape node, and I'm connecting the two so that the one on the shape node drives the one on the, I'm sorry, the one on the transform node drives the one on the shape node. That's what I'm doing. It's a little confusing. I have to write it down sometimes too to make sure I get it. But so now I have uh, those attributes. So let's see. If I select my camera here and I reveal the focus, uh, the focal length here, if I change the focal length, let me just move this down a little bit if I can. If I change the focal length with my slider, notice that the camera is changing. So I'm controlling that now. And that wasn't the case before because this is the transform node and this is the shape node attribute. See how they're, they're connected. Uh, this has got something controlling it. This has something controlling it and that's this. So whenever I move that, those values change. 8.23. Okay, so let's add another attribute. This is going to be my f-stop. So to my camera transform node, notice that it is selected. To my camera transform node, I'm going to add a f-stop. The f-stop is uh, going to be a float value. It has a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 64. And the minimum, actually, is going to be, uh, I'm going to set my minimum to 1 or my default value to 1. Uh, so when it starts, it starts with 1. So I'm going to say add. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add my final one, which is my focus region scale. Focus. All right. Oops. Focus region scale. And this, um, I'm going to have a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of a thousand, and it doesn't actually have a minimum, a, a maximum value that I know of. So I've never used a value that high before, but I'm just going to give myself the possibilities. And so I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to say add, and I'm going to close this out. So now I have my f-stop and my focus region on my transform node. So my transform node then is going to run or control. So I'm going to load my transform node. Here are my attributes down here for f-stop. And I need to load my shape node over here. So this is actually fairly quick and easy. So my f-stop is going to drive my f-stop. My focus region scale is going to drive my focus region scale. And i got to find that. Focus region scale. And that's, that's all there is to it. Um, so ideally, if I choose my transform node or I select my camera, I have the f-stop value, my focus region scale, and my focus length. Okay, now we need to test the camera out and make sure everything is working. One of the easiest things we can do is just set up a few objects on our scene. In a scene, 
with some texture I'm just going to use a checkerboard and a couple objects and um, we'll test it out so I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with me setting that up I'm just going to um, uh, set it up for you actually you know what I'll do what I like to do is I'll save this I'll show you something that's pretty interesting uh, just as a little bonus here so here's my camera and it's set up I can move my camera wherever I want I like to save these things and use them as references uh, so if I want to use this camera in lots of scenes say that once I make sure it works and everything I can pull that into a scene that already exists as a reference if I modify the original scene so if I keep this as a as a what I call a reference um, if I keep it and I use it in multiple scenes then if I change the file that I'm using as the reference then then all the scenes that it's in as a reference gets updated so I like to do that um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll show you what I mean by that so I'm gonna save my scene here it's my depth of field cam version 2 and I'm gonna open up a different scene and so I'm gonna go back to that little character that I had um, uh, earlier because it's got lots of texture on it you can see uh, you can see uh, pretty much uh, a lot of the details. Now I'm just going to leave it in grayscale uh, at the moment. And uh, I'm going to just add a little bit of movement to it. Uh, this is just a little robot kind of character. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring into this character my camera. So I'm going to say create reference. And I choose the thing that I want to use as a reference, depth of field camera version 2. Here's my camera. I've just brought it in. It's set up uh, to be this way. So let me uh, show you something. So I want to. What I want to do is I'm going to place my camera's focus point on my target where I want it to be focusing. Basically, I'm going to place that at the corner of this uh, robot's uh, corner of this robot's head essentially and then I'm going to move my camera in and notice that all my controls are right here really easy to get to I don't have to scroll down anything just really nice and easy to get to now the camera if I select the camera and I hit the T key I have a center of interest that I can manipulate and wherever I move this camera it'll always stay focused on it and if I uh, start to do this I'm going to go into panels and I'm gonna do uh, I'm just gonna go into four view and over here I'm gonna say look through uh, look through selected and uh, I'm gonna bring up my camera settings I'm gonna bring up my view so I can see make sure I'm looking through I'm looking through my So here's my camera. Make sure I move it. That's the head of my object. I'm going to bring my camera down. This is the target, where the target is supposed to be looking. In this window, I'm going to smooth shade it here. Move my camera over. So I'm going to move my camera around so I can kind of see what I'm looking at. I want to be able to move it in and close to the object I need to bring up my windows again I had the wrong thing selected alright so I'm going to move my camera over a little bit move it in a little bit move it down a little bit so I have some clarity here alright I'm going to bring this up and then shade it now notice that when I have this button checked, it shows me depth of field. Now I have to make sure depth of field is on. I'm going to select my camera. I have to choose depth of field. I'm turning it on. Notice that these have attributes driving it. Well, what's nice is those controls uh, are right here. My focus length is the kind of camera that I want to use. So I have the ability to control that. I want a 50 millimeter camera. My f-stop gives me the ability to focus on a specific point 
And that point is going to be the distance 